Hey guys, how's it going? This is Jordan Flowers with Redeeming Dry Bones Ministries. So today I want to talk to you guys a little bit about storms. See, storms are the things in our lives that kind of come out of nowhere and hit us upside the head and kind of shake our foundation a little bit. Sometimes they're so overwhelming that we actually stop looking at God and we start looking at the storms. These storms may consist of having issues at your job or maybe having an issue with someone that you care about or having issues financially or having issues in your education or whatever it may be. You're just having issues that you see and you're not really seeing God in the moment. You're just seeing the issues. See, the thing that I want you guys to hear today is that we're not supposed to live I'm sorry, we're not supposed to reside in the storm. We may live in the storm, but we don't reside in the storm. Perfect example of this is when Jesus is out on the boat with his disciples and the winds and the waves are crashing and Jesus is dead asleep. He is not waking up. And the storm is just going haywire and the boat's being tossed back and forth and even Peter's freaking out who's a fisherman. So that tells me it was probably a pretty intense storm. And they start shaking him awake and they say, Master, Master, wake up, we're going to die. So Jesus wakes up and he rebukes the winds and the waves. Then he looks at the disciples and says, Ye of little faith. See, at this moment when he turns to them and says, Ye of little faith, my mind starts turning and I, I wonder, why did he say that to them? Now some have said that the reason why is that he had told them previously how he was going to die. And at that moment they were showing a lack of faith in who he was and what he was able to do. Now I agree with this, but I also think there was something deeper to that. I think the fact of the matter is, is that they had little faith in his eyes because he was right there with them. And instead of looking towards him, they were looking at the winds and the waves. See, God will bring us into situations where we are in a storm, where stuff is going chaotic and everything else, but He doesn't call us to reside in the storm. He calls us to reside in Him. Therefore, any storm He sends us into, He's right there in the boat with us. Just like Jesus was in the boat with His disciples during this huge storm that was freaking everybody out. See, Jesus was at peace. In the middle of this crazy storm, he was completely at peace. What would happen if the disciples sat down, looked at Jesus, felt the peace that he was giving off, and just felt peace? They acknowledged the storm going on around them, but they just looked to Jesus and sat patiently, waiting for the storm to ease or to get through it. Because Jesus wasn't worried. He was sleeping. This reminds me of David when he's running from his son Absalom in Psalm 63, where he's in the wilderness of Judah. He's having all these people trying to kill him. Nothing's going his way. Yet he says, My heart aches for you, my God. My soul thirsts for you, my God. Where you are is where I want to be. See, David had this, this unrelenting desire to be in the presence of the Lord. Even in the worst circumstances, even when he saw death all around him in, in danger, he looked to God and he said, My heart aches for you. My, my heart thirsts for you. How many of us can say that when we're going through the storm, we look at Jesus? How many of us can say that when we're going through trials and tribulations, the first place we turn to is God? I don't. I do sometimes. Most of the time, I don't. I turn to things that I can understand, like go work out, video games, talk to somebody. But really, is talking to somebody better than talking to my God? Is talking to somebody really better than sitting down and having relationship with the Father and following after what He has for me. See, Jesus is called the Prince of Peace. Therefore, when we reside in Him and we abide in Him, we can have the peace that He has. See, in that moment when Jesus is sleeping on the boat, He has peace that surpasses all understanding because the disciples are looking at the winds and the waves going, Dude, we're, we're toast, we're going to die. 
But Jesus is just totally fine. He has the power to rebuke the winds and the waves. Yes, and he does. But is that really what he wants for us at that moment? Do we need to grow by going through that storm and looking to him and residing in his peace? During a hurricane, you have something called the eye of the storm. The eye of the storm is the one point where everything around it is going chaotic, but that point is just still. The storm is deafening around it, and you can't hear anything, but it's still. So if you're in the eye of the storm, you know there's a storm around you, but you're not getting whipped around by the winds. You're not getting taken off your feet. You know the storm is there. Walking with Jesus is kind of like walking in the eye of the storm. See, the storm's all around us, and we can decide to stand in the storm and go, what, God, why are we going through this? Why is this hitting me so hard? Why did I lose that person? Why isn't this relationship working out? Why can't I figure out my job? Why can't I go here? Why can't I go there? Why is all these things? Why are all these things happening? Last time I was on here, I talked to you guys about a relationship that isn't really working out and God's asked me to walk away from. That's not an easy thing to do. And I can stand there in the overwhelming sense of, of the emotions that come with it. And I can stand in that storm of emotions and go, why? I don't understand. Or I can take a step back and lean into God's understanding and say, okay, I trust you. I see the emotions. I see everything there. I acknowledge you're there. They're real. But you're in control. They're real, but I'm going to put my life in your hands. They are around me, but you are for me. They are coming at me but you stand with me see God will never leave you especially in a storm just like Jesus went out with his disciples on that boat I have a secret suspicion he knew the storm was coming I think he knew exactly what was gonna happen and he was waiting for his disciples to realize what faith really meant he wanted his disciples to see that even in the midst of the storm, he's in control. And if they would have just sat down in that boat and had the peace that he had, whew, I think they would have walked out and he would have said, you're men after my own heart. You guys seek after me even in this craziness. See, in our lives, too often we get distracted by the winds and the waves. Too often we look at our circumstances and not towards God. We look at the things that are around us rather than the one that is for us. God can stop the winds and the waves. He can stop the storms. But maybe He doesn't want to. So I encourage you, Instead of residing in the storm, ask God to calm the storm in you. Let the storm continue to happen all around you. Let those experiences, those circumstances, all those things continue to happen. But have the storm that's inside of you that's saying, God, I can't do this. Ask Him to calm that storm. So that the only thing you have is peace and faith that He'll get you through the storm. Because that's when your faith grows. That's when your trust in the Father grows. That's when He looks at you and says, Good. You're growing. Instead of, ye of little faith. I don't know about you, but I don't want Jesus ever to look at me and tell me that I have little faith. I don't want my Father ever to look at me and say, You aren't getting it. You're not doing enough. You don't understand it. I'm trying to show you something, but you're too stuck on yourself and too stuck on your flesh to see past it. I don't want Jesus to ever say that to me. What I want to hear is, well done, my good and faithful servant. What I want to hear is, you, were, you resided in me. You abided in me. You pursued me. And you didn't pursue the world. Yes, the storms crashed and the waves came in and the winds howled. Lightning, thunder. Use your imagination. But you still you still clung to me and trusted that I would guide you ashore. Whew. I don't know about you guys, but 
whenever I enter a storm, I pray and hope that my first initial thought is to look to Jesus and see if this is a storm that he wants me going into or a storm that I've made myself go into based on my decisions. Because we have the flip. You can choose to go into a storm that God doesn't want you to have. You can choose to walk into a situation that you don't need to be in. But there are those situations that God leads you to that you don't want to be in. But he brings you to it because he's going to bring you through it. Either way, we still need to step back into the eye of the storm and be where God is, in the peace, in the, the area where we acknowledge the storms around us, but we know that we're safe because he is with us and he is for us. So I encourage you, let him be your peace with whatever it is you're going through. If you have a storm right now that you need prayer for, let me know. If you have something that you just can't lay down and you feel it weighing on you and it's overwhelming and it's heavy and it's beating you down, let me know. I will pray with you. I will pray for you. You're not alone. Just like when you're in the storm, you are not alone. God is for you. Therefore, who can stand against you? God is with you. Therefore, Therefore, why are you afraid of the storm? Be in His peace. Abide in Him. That's something i got to learn too. But God is greater. God is stronger. God is more powerful than any storm you and I will ever face. And He can stop it if He chooses to. But there's times where He won't stop it. Instead of saying, Lord, why aren't you stopping this storm? I'm about ready to give up. Say, God... Stop the storm in me because I can't handle this storm alone. I guarantee you, just like he made the winds and the waves stop on that ocean, on that sea, he will make the winds and the waves stop in you. You just got to let him. So when you're in the storm, abide in God. Reside in his peace. Reside in the eye of the storm with him. And he'll get you home. This is Redeeming Drop Bones Ministries. Let me know if you need any prayer. I love you guys so much. Thank you for listening, and God bless.